Saudi Arabia just shocked American scientists with this. The climate of Saudi Arabia is notoriously harsh, with very little precipitation. The terrain has been extremely barren due to its composition of largely desert and partly arid lands. The desert, however, is experiencing a stunning event at the moment. Even scientists have been taken aback by the quick transformation of deserts into arable land. When did this desert become so active? To find out, keep watching the video. Knowing how dry this country was in the beginning would be helpful before we get into the causes of the increasingly remarkable farmlands in Saudi Arabia. We always thought of Saudi Arabia when we thought of extreme heat, dryness, and deserts. This is accurate. The world's largest desert, Rub al Khali, covers a staggering 650,000 square kilometers and is located in Saudi Arabia. In reality, this was on the scale of the entire nation. Do you know that this country, which is the 14th largest in the world, covers an area of 2,140 square kilometers but has not a single permanent river? If you feel like you've heard it all, calm down. This is only the beginning. It was mentioned earlier that Saudi Arabia is a country with low rainfall. There has never been an annual rainfall in the country that was greater than 150 millimeters. A more appropriate proportion is required. As a result, much of Saudi Arabia has been severely parched, with just the southwest region suitable for farming. There were just about 400 square kilometers of farmable land in the country as recently as the late 1960s, just 0.5% of the total population. You might be wondering, at this point, how the locals had managed to get by without any access to agricultural goods? The explanation at least makes sense. Small fields planted with native crops were crucial to inhabitants' survival before the country began seeing a breakthrough in the expansion of farmlands. All other essential food items, however, were imported because they could not be planted. Only in the most confined of coastal strips could food staples like dates and vegetables be farmed. This restriction was disappointing given the size of the country. Let's talk about that amazing oil dam right now. A vital component of Saudi Arabia's rapidly expanding cropland. Despite the country's water shortage, more is desperately needed. It turns out that Saudi Arabia has the largest oil resource of any country in the world. As the adage goes, God put something special in everyone. In March of 1934, somewhere in Saudi Arabia, a substantial volume of crude oil was discovered in the dam oil field. Proving this theory correct, there were 1,440 meters of depth to the dam. That's why it didn't take long for the countries to amass 17% of the world's proven oil reserves. It was estimated that there were about 75 million barrels of oil in this reservoir. The government of Saudi Arabia reasoned that it could accomplish more because of the country's huge oil revenue. This marked the start of the miraculous process that led to a dramatic expansion of arable land. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has joined the ranks of the new seven wonders of the world. This is because a region that was once a major hub for important food supplies is now a major hub for exporting wheat, dates, dairy products, eggs, fish, poultry, birds, fruits, vegetables, and even flowers. How, though, did a country composed almost entirely of desert go from being a food importer to an exporter? We don't know what the Saudis are doing, so tell us. Despite how it looks, the transformation of Saudi Arabia's deserts into farms is therefore no miracle. While a bit of good fortune plays a role, the Saudi Arabian government's careful planning and execution of several policies and programs ultimately led to this shocking phenomenon. What did they do, though, exactly? Well, stay with me, and I'll explain how a desert was transformed into productive land by a combination of careful planning and a few strokes of luck. They began by spending a lot of money on technology. This is because all of the resources necessary to turn arid terrain into arable ones required modern machinery, massive investment in programs that encourage cutting-edge farming technologies, and rural infrastructure has completely changed Saudi Arabia as an agricultural powerhouse. Despite Saudi Arabia's enormous oil wealth, the government has not been resting on its laurels. Instead, the nation's wealth has invested 
interested in expanding agricultural opportunities. The government invested heavily in factories that made dairy products, meats, and poultry. In terms of agricultural goods like beef, milk, and eggs, the country was swimming in self-sufficiency by 1985. They were able to sustain themselves economically and become major exporters of agricultural goods. Milk production peaked at around 1,800 gallons per cow per year during this period as well. Fish farming also increased in popularity. These farms took up residence on both land and in water. These fish farms allowed for the cultivation of seafood to be produced. The prawns in particular were quite beneficial to the economy of the country. This led to Saudi Arabia's emergence as a major supplier of prawns to markets like Japan and the United States. The black tiger prawn breed did very well in terms of sales. The Saudi government's initiatives also led to the country's rapid transformation from a wheat importer to an exporter. Wheat storage facilities constructed in 1978 allowed for self-sufficiency by 1984. Wheat yields in major grain-producing regions have increased to around 3.6 tons per acre. Other cereals like barley and millet were also cultivated. Eventually, farmers were forced to reduce their grain output to protect their water supply. There was a rise in the output of crucial farm products, including fruits and vegetables, as farming and transportation systems advanced. That's why things like watermelons, grapes, citrus fruits, fruits, onions, squash, and tomatoes became staples in the region and big exports. Again, the rise in farming meant the more traditional Saudi dishes were available to the public. As a result, around 500,000 metric tons of dates of various types were produced annually. Soon, several plants around the country began cranking out thousands of tons of dates to send around the world to combat hunger and poverty. In terms of food aid to other countries, the country became the second greatest donor to the United Nations. Being in Saudi Arabia must feel great right about now. The government's willingness to encourage local farmers also contributed to the quick improvement of the country's architectural status. They did this in several ways, one of which was giving farmers access to zero-interest loans and helpful resources. The farmers were once again able to import raw materials and farming equipment duty-free, and they had access to cheap water, fuel, and electricity. The government was also prudent and kind by providing investors with tempting incentives. They Therefore, foreign joint venture partners did not have to pay taxes for a period of up to 10 years. The April 2000 investment laws established even greater incentives. The country's Ministry of Agriculture deserves all the credit for enacting laws that have been beneficial to local farmers, without which none of this would have been possible. The Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank, Saab, also maintained its zero-interest lending and subsidy programs for farmers. In addition, in 1972, organizations were set up to operate grain silos, construct flour mills, and manufacture animal feed. Modernized roadways were built to link farming communities with urban centers and consumer markets, supporting farmers with high capital demands. The government also launched capital-intensive initiatives, which contributed to economic diversification, new food crops, higher crop yields, and improved methods for pest resistance were all made possible thanks to government funding for scientific research. Agricultural research institutions at various colleges also served as a hub for cooperation between local farmers and scientists. Everything possible was being done. Since water is crucial to farming, it was also vital. Due to its water shortage, Saudi Arabia's agricultural success required a combination of good fortune and clever planning. This is how the problem of water was ultimately resolved. They started with aquifers. There is some water in Saudi Arabia. In the most fruitful urban and agricultural areas, deep tube wells were sunk. Saudi Arabia now relies entirely on this old water supply. The Saudi Arabians are using the aquifers as a primary source of water in their quest for Greenland. The country was able to make the most of its marine resources once again. The government quickly began desalination efforts due to the abundance of coastline in the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea. This resulted in the rapid desalination of ocean water for human use. 
Therefore, the Saline Water Conversion Cooperation SWCC managed over 27 desalination facilities across the nation, providing over 3 million cubic meters of drinkable water every day. In the end, the government developed a solution to the water crisis that is now widely used, electric power recycled water. In this procedure, water destined for household consumption was recycled. Because of this, factories dedicated to water recycling were constructed in the nation's capital and other major industrial centers. Reclaimed water is being used for watering crops and pastures. The availability of water for farming was greatly enhanced by these procedures. This video has reached its conclusion. What do you think of the fact that Saudi Arabia's deserts are gradually turning into verdant farmland? Thanks for watching! If you want more videos like this one, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel to never miss out on any of our videos.